Great. It looks like we have quite a few people joining, so we do want to be cognizant of everyone's time during this lunch hour. So we'll go ahead and get started uh, um, here. So welcome to today's webinar, Assessing Talent in an Ever-Changing World. Uh, it's hosted today by the Encompass Group, along with our terrific partner, Outmatch. Um, this is a Ring Central webinar, so we have muted everyone today just to try and eliminate as much background noise as possible, um, allowing for you to focus on the, the great content that we're going to present to you. With that, um, there is a Q&A button at the bottom of your Ring Central screen. So if you have any questions throughout today's presentation, feel free to type them as they go so you don't forget. Um, we might address a few in there, here and there as we go through if it's a clarifying question, um, but we'll probably focus on the Q&A at the end just to make sure again that we get through all of this great content. Additionally, uh, you'll receive a copy of this presentation via email uh, here shortly after the presentation. Um, maybe look for it tomorrow morning, um, but we'll make sure to get you a copy of the presentation so that you can reference it back. Um, and also in that email, that is where you will receive that SHRM recertification ID number uh, that goes towards one PDC. So that will be given to you in that uh, email afterwards. All right. So we're going to go ahead and give you a, a quick high level overview of the Encompass Group before we jump in too much today. Um, and I hand the, the reins over to the Outmatch team. Um, but we are the Encompass Group. We are your uh, single partner for HR technology and solutions. Um, really what we focus on is full cycle employment. That includes pre-active and post-employment. Uh, we also have human capital consulting, uh, your partner um, for strategies as you uh, navigate this world of human, human capital management. Um, and then today we're really going to be focusing on our talent management portion. So this is really uh, where the Encompass Group comes in to help you attract and retain that right talent for your organization. And we partner with great um, we have some great partners in that area, including Outmatch. And so that's really gonna be our focus today in talent management. Um, if you've joined other recent webinars, you know that we've really focused on um, items related to COVID-19. And so we're still gonna be kind of along that same topic today, um, but navigating COVID-19, but also what it looks like afterwards. So I'll let the Outmatch team kind of talk to that, but uh, we're really excited to kind of stick with that theme, but also broaden that conversation today a little bit to talk about talent management as a whole. So quick introductions today. I'm Andy Terrell. I am the VP of Client Experience here at the Encompass Group. I've been with Encompass for five years now, uh, really focusing on implementation as well as um, you know, client experience overall, making sure that our clients have a terrific uh, experience with our team, uh, getting everything that they need, the support and the strategy um, prior to the Encompass Group. Uh, I was in town acquisition for several years, focusing on exactly what we're going to be talking about today, really developing and retaining talent uh, for your organization. I'm joined today by my colleague, uh, Robert Rich. I'll let him introduce himself and then we'll let the Outmatch team introduce themselves. So, so Rob, over to you. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Andy. Hey, guys, my name is uh, Robert. I'm here with the, uh, with the Encompass Group. I am one of the uh, human capital consultants here uh, at Encompass. Kind of a career HR guy, uh, been in the field for more than 10 years now, kind of got into it because I was really interested in employee relations management. Uh, but it ended up morphing really into the, uh, the compensation strategy and, and, and leading a lot of mergers and acquisitions uh, from an HR side, kind of due diligence and, and that sort of thing. Uh, so in terms of kind of professional interests, the things that really kind of uh, fire me up, uh, employee engagement, career development, um, and retention measures, um, I think are, are very exciting. I really enjoy partnering with clients um, around project needs and kind of just acting as a resource to, to mind share and, and bounce ideas when needed. Um, you know, on a personal note, you can see here I'm a big baseball fan. So uh, in Dallas, we like the Texas Rangers. So that's a little bit about me. I'll pass it over to, uh, to our friend Logan here. Thanks, Rob. Hi, everyone. My name is Logan Sand. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm a uh, partner development manager at Outmatch. Me, I work with partners like the Amazing Compass Group uh, and really being able to pair our solutions with that overarching uh, objective, right? And the goals in, that you work with uh, on a daily basis. And uh, I've been here at Outmatch for uh, just over two years now. Uh, previous to that, following Andy's journey, I actually I came from that background as well within talent management and uh, talent acquisition uh, and I've oversaw a number of key programs and excited to talk with you today about 
um, what talent effectiveness looks like and how to be adaptable uh, within, within this, this time that we're in today. So excited to do that. But uh, before we start there, I want to I wanna jump over to my colleague, Andrew. Hey there, everybody. Uh, Andrew D'Agostino here, also with Outmatch. Uh, I am an IO psychologist for Outmatch and work specifically on our product team. So helping to translate the solutions that we want to provide our, our clients into actual software. So I learned how to speak engineer, which is very fun. Um, so I'm really looking forward to kind of sharing some best practices across our organization um, at Outmatch. And we'll cover a little bit about what we do and the clients we serve. Um, and also just talk about kind of what's ha what we're seeing across our client base with COVID um, and pass on anything that we can to help uh, everyone in this time of need. Excellent. Yeah. So let's go through a quick agenda of what we're going to talk about today. So really, um, you know, it is no, it, there, there's not a single person on this call that doesn't know what coronavirus is today. And so we really need to look at macroeconomics because that does make a human resource impact. Um, and so where are we right now? And we're going to talk a little more about that um, in, in really the lens of outmatch. Um, how can we be prepared for the new normal? So as we've been so reactive to what has been going on uh, in the marketplace today and, and also just the unknowns from day to day or hour to hour, you know, how can we start to prepare for what might the, the future hold for us and how we can still hold on to our talent strategies, but maybe kind of retweak or rethink of how that might look for, for, for your organization. And, and, and really touch base on the, that final point of, of talent strategy post COVID-19, right? To have a plan uh, and to start thinking about those concepts of, of, of what might make sense for you uh, as, we, as we go through this COVID and post COVID process. Um, and with that, I, I, I think that it makes sense to do a quick introduction of, of Outmatch itself. So AD, why don't, why don't we go through an introduction? Sure, yeah, um, just really high level and we'll get to the meat of what we wanna talk about today. Uh, so Outmatch works to deliver uh, data at key points in the talent life cycle. So how do we help people make good decisions? That's what we're trying to do at the end of the day. Um, we approach everything we do from the bottom three words there. How can we be as simple as possible, as smart as possible, but also human? We're all we're dealing with the humans at the end of the day, and we want to make sure that people are the forefront of every solution that we provide uh, and every interaction we have. All right. With that being said, uh, we thought it'd be a good place to start and talking about what we're seeing um, and these four different areas, which some of these are probably not a surprise to anyone, um, but what is the impact of coronavirus uh, today and over the last month and a half, two months? Um, the world has changed a lot very shortly. Um, we're all now, most of us are doing remote work unless you're an essential employee. And that has caused a lot of uh, challenges across our client base. We have um, over 800 direct clients in lots of um, large uh, service-oriented businesses, um, such as American Airlines, uh, Subway, Disney. Um, and this has impacted a lot of people, um, causing HR organizations to gear up their, their uh, workforce to work remotely um, all, entirely across the board. So systems in place to re work remotely, communication in place, lots of changes um, impacting everyone, which I'm sure a lot of you are also right in the midst of that. Um, as a result, activities are now uh, going virtual uh, when prior to this, they were not virtual, <laughs> they were face-to-face. -face. Um, so do we have the right systems in place to foster those virtual activities across the board? Um, is presenting a lot of changes for organizations and changes that might last when we reopen the doors after this. Um, the other, th the third point that we're seeing is unfortunately high unemployment. I'm sure everyone's kind of monitoring this and it's impacting all of our organizations um, as people are making layoffs um, and we're seeing other organizations let people go. We started this year in a completely different situation. Um, we were at unemployment being, unemployment being the lowest we've seen in a very long time and a few months go by and now we are going completely to the other side and unemployment at some of the highest levels we've seen in a very long time. So we're going to talk a little bit about what that might mean for implications, uh, but initially right off the bat leads to this fourth area, 
our clients are getting ready to receive more applicants than recruiters can process once this door is reopened. So a lot of what we're trying to do with our uh, clients and what we're sharing with you guys today is how do we prepare for this event, knowing that we might post a job and get thousands of applicants, whereas we started this year with getting a couple or having sourcing challenges. Completely different um, scenario and one that we should be preparing for because it's going to happen with most jobs that we're going to post. So those are kind of the four different areas um, that we see being in, uh, our clients being impacted. Uh, and Logan, I'll pass this off to you for the next slide to think about, to show how we think about this in different boxes. Yeah, thanks, AD. And, and you know, I think that this, it's, it's a really important to, to, to think of this through the, the lens of outmatch, right? So as we are bringing awareness to this to our clients, and of course, our, our clients, uh, everybody on this call is really living through this, this, this unknown and unprecedented time in terms of talent and how we are really driving through this and navigating through this, through the uncertainty. It's really about looking through it, uh, and we're gonna look at three key concepts today um, from, from that macro view. And so number one is talent selection. Uh, we're going to talk about how we're optimizing these talent pools, how those changes, as AD mentioned before, um, how those uh, are, are now starting to change and now starting to think about things a little differently when we're, when we're getting talent in, into our doors. Um, and then, by the way, employee development. So what happens now that an individual gets to a role and lands into your, to, to your organization? So how are you onboarding them? Um, what are some of the the uh, what's some of the framework there and, and, and how is that going to be changing as we as we look through um, the flip side as well is um, workforce mobility so there may be untapped uh, or identifying those those uh, untapped talent pools in the way that we're working today versus the way we might be working tomorrow so through those three lenses we're going to have a, an open dialogue conversation so Andy Rob uh, feel free to jump in as well and I think that we're going to um, you know, have, have more of a conversation around these three overarching concepts. Uh, and then we'll talk about how we can really, uh, we have some solutions that we can apply to these challenges that we're facing today. So great. So AD, I know you talked initially about, you know, in, in, on that first coronavirus slide, you talked about how, how in the beginning of this year, we actually started at 3.4% nationally at an unemployment rate. And, and I know there are a number of you on this call, I think even ourselves as, as from an outmatch perspective, as we were, rap as we were rapidly hiring and we were um, looking at growth for 2020, um, you know, it was about pushing people away, you know, really looking at, at, at the war on talent and trying to understand, you know, how do we, um, you know, how do we uh, really find the best talent? How do we select that talent? How do we attract that type of talent. Um, but now we're seeing this direct impact. And so on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see that this is from the US Department of Labor. And actually, this is an old slide. I know that there are new updated numbers today that there are now nearly 26 million people filing for unemployment claims in the United States. Um, and so when you think of that overarching number, now all of these people are now going to be looking for work um, and looking at different organizations. And you know, oftentimes, you know, I actually had a friend of mine who was applying for roles prior to COVID and, and still on that journey. Uh, and she was telling me that, you know, I applied for a role the other day and um, it was on LinkedIn for one day. Uh, and I noticed that there were nearly a thousand applicants already for that role, right? And so, you know, where we at one point we were saying, hey, you know, we need to find that talent and cultivate that talent and track them in. Now we actually have to push them out um, and, and really understand how to decipher uh, uh, what type of talent we're looking for and what truly makes sense for the right fit. Absolutely. You know, and I think we had, we had talked about this earlier, but depending on your organization, a lot of times your candidates are also your customers. So we're going to have a lot more applications uh, from candidates, or we should prepare to at least have a lot more applications than we can process. And these people are, are folks that we want to leave a good impression of, even if they don't get the job. Um, so it takes, it, we're now being pushed to think about how are we going to get through all these applicants, make sure they have a good candidate experience with their organization, bring in the right fit, and then successfully release them back if they're not the right fit, but leave them with a good impression of our organization. That's kind of the challenge that we're framing up that our clients are starting to uh, pay attention to 
because once those doors reopen or, or those jobs are now being posted, that's the world that they're living in. Yeah, I mean, no question. You know, I think that's, a, AD, you're really talking about managing that talent pipeline, right? So, you know, when you think of, um, you know, I, I, obviously a number of you have thought about this talent strategy and, and started to think about that last year for 2020 and your growth objectives, your, your fill objectives, and now things may be a little different. So not only are you looking to find the right talent, but also be able to create that talent community, right? And that's a, that's a really important piece of, of that puzzle is to, to, to continue to engage individuals through this, this, type, this time, as well as, um, you know, even if I didn't get the job, I had a really great experience working with your organization. Yeah, and I think too, you know, it's, it's about finding the right talent for the job, but also some of these jobs might not change from where we are now right after when we reopen our doors, they might remain virtual and we, need, we should be prepared for how do the jobs, how are the jobs going to change in that virtual environment uh, where they were once face to face and they're no longer like that. And do we have the right people not only to do that job, but also do that job in the virtual environment, which is a new challenge that we didn't have, uh, mostly didn't have prior to this. Yeah, the unknowns are the unknowns in, in what's coming tomorrow is something that we should start to think about. So really the question that we're asking is, you know, hiring for what we know today, but what do we not know about tomorrow, right? What are some of those, you know, being in a virtual setting? I couldn't tell you the last time I've had a jacket on until this call today, right? Um, so when you think of things like that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a different type of presentation. It's a different type of workflow. It's a different type of process. And so um, as you're thinking of, as you're thinking of, you know, the daily, the daily roles that you've had, they may look very different, um, you know, in front of a screen or in front of presentations or, you know, even just in the, in the actual role activity, right? So, you know, redefining those roles and then really understanding what, what are my, you know, what are, what are my employees missing or what are some of those things that, those gaps that we need to make sure that we, that we cover when we, when we make those next hires. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, just to kind of wrap up, uh, final thought on this slide. The way I kind of look at this is we have gone from a uh, from from kind of a, a seller's market to a buyer's market. If we want to look yeah. at this in terms of kind of real estate, right? So um, it's going to be really important now. Instead of looking to find people to fill these roles, we've just got to be sure that we're finding the right people to fill these roles. And a lot of what the outmatch tool um, and, and you know, in partnership with Encompass is, is can do is is help with that kind of key question. That in, in tandem with kind of minimizing our turnover is going to be kind of key. And we've got to consciously shift our thinking in the way that we're looking at these candidates. Totally, absolutely. That's a, that's a great point. And actually, Rob, you know, you know, there's another concept here is that, uh, and actually it's great, AD, you can jump to the next slide. Um, you know, there's a number of companies and some of you even on this, this call today that may be hiring now, right? And really saying it's not just about a warm body, but it's really about how do I find the right people for these roles? And so, you know, when you look at this, it's a quick, it's a quick pool of current companies hiring today. Uh, and, and, you know, you may not have expected 1.5 million jobs to be open for big box retail, right? And so, yeah, it's great to have the warm body, but how are we being effective in that process, right? Um, because turnover is going to be absolutely key, and the cost of that bad hire could be, you know, exponential if we're not if we're not really thinking about who we're bringing on board. Yeah, and I think you know we. This is a telling slide for me, and it is it's really impactful on what I'm seeing with our client base because I'm seeing an explosion of um, roles that were we're just kind of normal processing before this, like delivery drivers, uh, huge explosion. Our clients need a lot of them very quickly and they need to get the systems in place for them to operate. Uh, big box online, obviously <laughs> a lot more selling and processing of online orders are happening now. Um, so you, you, you folks may, may be in some of these industries, you may not be, you may have some roles in them, but I think overall is that we're still seeing hiring happening today um, and then we should expect for an even more explosion of that uh, coming up. Great, and, and I think, you know, as you think of that talent acquisition process, now we're really talking about the other, the other key piece of this is, you know, outside of simply hiring and simply, you know, that talent acquisition process. But um, I had a client say this to me the other day is that not only do we want to keep good, but we want to create great, right? So how do we become an organization that really does look at the individual at hand and, and are they ready for not only the role they're in, but where do they want to go? 
And so some questions to consider, right? Are, you know, are you develop, what, is there a format that you have to develop your people? Um, you know, is your feedback with them? Are you, are you in this virtual world we're, we're in? You know, I need to make sure that I have one-on-ones um, with my direct report every day, right? So, you know, or, or every week or creating that type of cadence, right? So, you know, are they accurate? Are they appropriate? Are we having conversations that are really driving towards that career journey and career path? And are we supporting that, right? And, and, and not only, you know, looking at, and, and I think this is really where I wanted this conversation to go, is not only looking at, you know, the actual framework of that development, but looking at, you know, how does this look as, as we continue to stay in this virtual setting, but also how do we ensure that, that, that we're thinking about tomorrow and the potential doors that might open in the organization given the climate that we're in, right? Um, so, you know, I think that's a really, really important part is not only saying, you know, yeah, we definitely want to develop our people, but what does that truly look like and how are we asking the right questions and how are we guiding them on their journey? Yeah, I think, you know, you laid out the three buckets that, that we're talking about. We just talked about talent uh, selection. We're going to talk a little bit more about that coming up. But the, the middle bucket is now employee development. And going off what you said, Logan, pre-COVID, uh, we, we had a major focus on um, development and retaining employees, giving them career paths. And it's not that those things have gone away now, but we do need to plan for a shift when it comes to this category. So we just said we should prepare for a world where we're going to be processing a lot of applicants. That also means that we're going to be hiring a lot of people. And so now how are we going to onboard those people? Now they're part of the company and we're starting their development journey. So what is that onboarding process going to look like in this post COVID world? And then think about also long-term development for these individuals as well. Yeah, and that's a, and that's a great uh, point just now that you mentioned, because we actually just had a question come in um, related to onboarding. So I know we're focusing a lot on, on hiring throughout our presentation today, but the, the question specifically was around you know, onboarding and practi practical tips and tricks right now, um, since we are in a virtual environment, um, which is a great topic. We, we've been talking about this as we were preparing for this webinar today on um, you know, how not only is it virtual when they apply through an applicant tracking system, when they go through the assessment and the video interviewing that we're going to talk about here in the next couple of slides, um, but then also how they can be virtually onboarded. And so, um, you know, that's really where the Encompass group comes in to help you in that capacity um, in, in, our, in our partners that we have, where their entire experience can literally be virtual at this point. Um, and that's really what we've equipped ourselves to do, um, not just in the COVID environment, but also pre or post, you know, we're looking at a very remote uh, workforce um, that we've been leading up to this, we just kind of got shoved into it. And so that's really where we can build out the onboarding platform that you can utilize through our partner, um, through the HR platform, um, as well as learning management systems. So upon their first day, when they start, they can jump right into an online learning environment with a welcome message from the CEO or their boss or a colleague of theirs, um, making sure that they're getting that training that they really need to utilize. So this is really where the Encompass group comes in because not only do we have a great partner in Outmatch, and again, I won't spend too much time, I'll let them talk about their piece, um, but where with all of our technology that we have, you can create a really great experience with never having to exchange a piece of paper, um, never having to have to meet someone in person, but create that really great virtual environment for them. Um, and, and some of that is literally just getting on these types of things, these video conference calls, FaceTime, um, you know, getting that, that FaceTime, you know, that you can't necessarily have in person, but creating that environment that still makes them feel welcome. So um, great question, that capacity. I, we're going to focus a little bit on the talent management, but um, again, where the Encompass Group comes in to provide all that technology, you never have to exchange a piece of paper um, in that capacity. So um, more questions, definitely, uh, we'll, we'll touch on that a little more. So I'll, mm -hmm. I'll ping that back to you guys. Well, the, the only thing I'll add, you know, to that, I, uh, I know we did an outmatch. So we, when this was all going on, um, our internal team, uh, HR team, looked at all the systems that we had for onboarding and then said, you know, just a checklist, are they virtual or are they not? And if not, like, it allowed us to be really tactical about, okay, 
this is not virtual, we need to go find another one. So we at least did like an, I would say more like an inventory of our systems. I know that sounds um, pretty self-explanatory, but it was the, the exercise going through that exercise was really important. Um, and we, it would allow us to take uh, immediate actions. That was the only kind of tip I would add at this point. And AD, actually, that's a really good point for the next slide. Uh, and, and really does segue very well is this, you know, our business models are being disrupted. And, and actually, I, I like this. I, I, if you can't tell, I made this slide um, <laughs> with, this, with this meme I found, um, I think a friend posted. But, you know, it's, it's a little scary, right? The, the unknowns are scary. And, and the questions now start to ask, you know, what, what are we doing about what is virtual? What is not? How do we create this type of framework that makes sense? Um, and, and, and really the overarching question is your workforce, is it ready for that type of change? You know, being able to shift the sales when needed. Um, and so, you know, not only from, you know, when you think of it as, as internally with, with the employees, but then really that role responsibility again, you know, are you keeping up with changing customer demands? Are you, you know, we noticed that there are now a ton of hiring for e-commerce. Totally makes sense in this time and, a, in time and age that we are in, um, you know, are you prepared for that type of virtual experience? Um, and so, you know, really thinking about um, how that organization's culture really supports that type of change, supports that type of innovation, and, you know, kind of the fear of the unknown. Yeah. And it, it is, you know, a lot, the key word is change. And um, there's change for everyone. You know, some, some of you may be uh, managing organizations where some roles can't be virtual. So we're talking about most roles being virtual, some can't, but there's still change involved. And, you know, the, the thing that comes to my mind is that um, it really drives safety to the forefront of the list, the top of that list. So a lot of things now change because we're, we're putting a lens of safety uh, on that. So can, the, can our employees perform their job uh, even if it's essential and they have to, they have to go with face-to-face interactions safely. Um, and that is a lens that we may not have been a- applying pre- in a pre-COVID world. Um, so that's going to impact the systems that we will put in place. And it's going to impact the communications that we send to our employees uh, and the way that we do our jobs. And I think the key that we're asking our clients and our clients are asking us is how do we create a ch- culture of change? And one of the ways that you can influence this is look at policies um, that you have in place. Andy was just telling us a story earlier about um, she's at home with with her kid and her kid turned off the internet by accident on a meeting. So we are all working in environments with our families and our homes and uh, in places that we didn't before. So we might need to be looser in our restrictions, in our flex working time. Um, that we might not have had in the past. Every worker is now in an environment that they weren't in before with new environmental stressors on them. So do we have the right policies in place and doing that proactively? So, you know, we want to make our employees feel comfortable to work in this new environment. So maybe we should be proactive about this and not waiting for something to happen. Absolutely. Being proactive for change. I think that is a really great point. Um, And, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, really what we wanted to cover in this, this concept. And we're gonna be able to see how we can apply these concepts within, within the outmatch uh, functions, but really about this talent selection, talent development, and then really saying, is my workforce ready for this type of change and being, being on the proactive side of, of implementing that type of change management as well. Um, so I think, I think that's a really good point. Awesome. All right, so move on to the next one. Sure. And and I think that, you know, the big deal here is that, you know, we're saying with these type of concepts, how can we be prepared for that next normal, right? Um, I like that concept. Actually, I was talking to, um, his name's James, Jim Tamarco. He works at Almatch and he was saying, you know, I I like this, this concept of next normal, right? It's not really a new normal. I think we're living in new normals all the time, but how do we prepare for the next normal that we're going to see on this post COVID, on this post COVID journey that we're in? And, and so, you know, I, I think what, what I'd really like to think about now is, is, is actually the outmatch tools and how we can apply these into what um, we as talent acquisition specialists, or if you're overseeing an HR program, how you can actually apply these um, with very small change, but huge impact, right? 
Um, and so I think from there, what we'll do is we'll jump in the next slide. And this really, um, we'll talk about kind of three concepts that we want to touch base on. And you're going to actually see live experiences of how we can implement these within, within your process. Um, so, you know, um, I'm just going to touch briefly on this point, but I think, I think what, what's important is when you think of that talent selection, uh, as well as, as development and then mobility, it's really understanding, okay, what are those competencies or areas that we really need to focus in this role? And, and what, what is something that's important to, to the role at, at hand as we look at change? And then being able to, to have additional data points to really make those strong selection. Uh, it's, it's strong decisions, I should say. And so um, number one is a candidate assessment. So Outmatch does have an assessment tool um, that, is, that is behavioral and cognitive based. And so, you know, you're able to arm your, your teams with, with that data to make those calculated decisions in a fast paced manner, right? And so we're gonna look more at, at how that could be implemented to your process. We also do video interviewing. So outside of simply a, a you know, uh, if you have other video interview tools that you might be using or something like what we're on today, you know, how do we, how do we address that when you have maybe hundreds, if not thousands of candidates coming into place, we can't spend that much video time, you know, in front of screens when we're trying to do so many different other, other things. So we're going to look at um, our video interviewing platform that, that actually has pre-recorded interviews in which you can actually eliminate some of that, that time to fill uh, and we'll show how that, that looks as well. And then, of course, the employee assessment on the back end. So not only from the candidate side, but from the employee side of looking at some of how you of those strengths and how you can leverage that and then also close those gaps. And so we're going to look at a live view of of what your current employees could take uh, and actually get some some additional data and insights in maybe the way they've currently work or how they've been working and, and how you can really leverage some of those strengths that they have in this new environment that we're going to be in. And so we're going to look at all of these, but I really want to, before we go there, I want to touch base on, on really the framework of how these tools can be implemented into your process. Yeah. One, one point I'll add, uh, Logan, just for everyone. So, you know, we just, we just outlined some next normal as Logan just would just pointed out eloquently that we're, we should be preparing for a situation in which we're going to have a lot of applicants, a lot of people touching our, uh, our recruitment brand, and we want to make sure they have a good experience. We want to get through the get them through the hiring process as fast as possible. Uh, make the right hiring decision. Release candidates back that uh, weren't a good fit, but leave them in the good um, with a good impression of our organization. Onboard those people and set them up for a development journey. So we do have some tools, and uh, that was what Logan's jumping into now to help that. And we do want to just show you some examples of what you can do in your organizations. That's great, Ad. Thanks for that additional point, and that and that's a really good point. Is that you're 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 really looking at, you know, um, although change is good and implementations can be great, you know, you also want to make sure that there's there's still that uh, that branding and, and and ability to to leave them with a great lasting impression. And so. Um, what we're looking at right now is the assessment framework. So, um, you know, what we would look at from, we're looking at this from both the employer perspective and the applicant perspective. And so you would simply be adding a job, an assessment to that role. Um, and the individual would want to do an additional step, which would be apply for the job and take an assessment. Um, they complete that job application. And at that point, the, the employer, you uh, and your hiring teams can then look at the job match score, which we'll look at in a bit. Um, and show how simple that process is and the ease of use of that, of that process. But, um, you know, you're able to then filter down by, you know, a, a one to five scale and then being able to review that candidate report. So the, the, the data points to help you make those fast decisions. So top strengths and weaknesses, an interview guide uh, to, really, to really create some structure and framework to the, to the depth of the interview process. And then an onboarding and development guide that would be more on the, on the flip side of after that individual is hired. Um, you know, they don't have to retake that assessment. They can just jump right into these, these development reports and, and, and being able to really have that dialogue with their manager. So um, again, really looking at just an additional, an additional piece of that process, but, but of tremendous value when you think of it from a long, long game. Yeah, that's why we're talking about the assessments because it's the value proposition from an assessment. Some of you may be using one today. Some of you may be new to assessments. That's kind of the, this environment that we're going into is really where these come into play. It can give a nice experience if it's a good assessment, 
and it makes decision making scalable and easy across an organization. So that's why we're really focusing on, on that. Yeah, and, and that's a great call out, AD. I think, you know, the, the, the other piece here is, you know, when we're thinking of scale, um, you know, we're less, if you're looking at this timeline, right, that we're on, we're on the screen right now, we're, we're going to the assessment, we'll probably be going through a phone screen, a phone interview, and then an in-person interview. And actually, this is the exact framework I had in a prior life um, overseeing our talent acquisition program. I was in a logistics firm. And I'll tell you, you know, we would have anywhere from 20 to 25 phone screens a week. Um, we would have multiple phone interviews. We would jump into a live person interview. And when you think of that, you know, at the time, and like some of you on the call, it was a, you know, a one man band HR, right? So um, when I first jumped into this type of growth mode uh, and getting these type of applicants, my schedule would be filled with phone screens and phone interviews all week long. Um, and really, you know, me kind of facilitating and directing and, 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 and playing this part of, of managing that process. Well, you know, I think what we pose the question is, what's this video, video interviewing framework look like in this type of environment? And how does that create effectiveness on your side? So where we look at that phone screen, right, where we may have be asking those individuals that we want to move through the process or determine if we want to prequal, um, that's really where the pre-recorded video interviews can be, meaning um, that there'll be uh, certain questions that are asked or that you're asking every single candidate going through that role um, that you could then simply ask and they will actually record themselves on video where then you can go back and actually evaluate their response. Outside of that, I think a really good point to make here and, and AD is actually, um, uh, you know, you talk about this all the time and I love, I love this about the, the tool and program is that you can really bring uh, an outside look or bring that engagement in uh, from this pre-recorded session. So meaning, you know, I'm a recruiter, I can tell you all about the accounting role, but I'm not an accountant, right? So um, there's the ability to actually pre-record your questions and also do things like, you know, a video from the CEO, uh, information about the environment, um, you know, have an accountant ask some of the questions or talk about a day in the life. So there's a lot of transitions and pieces within this pre-recorded framework that you can actually make a, a substantial impact knowing, um, you know, how you want your organization to sound, what does that look like, and how to keep that candidate engaged. And then on the phone interview side, you know, when you, when you look at that, um, you know, within the same one platform, you know, not only being able to take that pre-recorded interview and say, hey, I like the individual's answers, but now I want to take them to a live interview. Um, there's a live interview capability within the platform, meaning that you can actually then set up and schedule the meeting, um, jump onto the platform and actually have a live engaging conversation with the individual. So where a phone interview may take place, um, you know, or you may have multiple people that would be in a, in a, uh, in a candidate um, uh, from, a, uh, from the standpoint of having multiple people interview that single candidate. Um, from a panel interview perspective, um, you can actually add multiple people and actually have that conversation live in camera with a more of a virtual setting uh, in a way that, quite frankly, we may not be in offices uh, anytime soon, depending on where you are in the world. So, um, you know, that's another, that's another consideration and something we can do within, within the platform. Yeah, and I think this is a good framework. This is what we talk about on, with our clients because these are activities that are being performed anyway. So if any chance we can to automate processes and uh, process all these candidates that are gonna be applying to our jobs, you know, that's what we want to focus in on. That's great. And so I think what we want to talk about is, is we're going to really look at from that framework, um, AD is going to take us through uh, not only the candidate experience and, and how we can create an engaging and amazing candidate experience, but then how the employer or your HR teams can really take that information and make smart decisions. So AD, I'm going to uh, pass that baton to you. Sure. Um, and so you just laid out, Logan just laid out a framework um, of some of our solutions, what we're seeing clients start to prepare for. Um, I wanna show a little bit of what that candidate experience looks like. This is a key concept. Uh, I'm sure we all think about uh, our candidates and giving them amazing experience. I'll show you a little bit about our solutions and how we approach this. Um, so the first, uh, 
one I want to show you is the candidate experience for the assessment. Now, typically, most of our clients use an assessment up front in their hiring process, and that's what we have with the Encompass solution as well. So a candidate applies to a job, and as part of that, they seamlessly go take an assessment as part of that application process. Um, for If it's like an hourly type role, typically a seven to 10 minute experience for hours, depending on what job it is. And then if it's a more professional type role, we might want to measure more content. Um, so we're looking at a 15 minute assessment there. Can be longer if you include more measurements. Um, now the assessment experience, I'll just open up here to a new screen. I decided to show the, the uh, mobile experience here, just so you can see what that looks like. Uh, what, assessments should be mobile optimized at this point. So whether you're using us as your vendor or another vendor, we challenge you to uh, talk about your mobile experience. We uh, see that 53% of our applicants are, are taking assessments and completing the applications on the ATS side. Um, uh, 53 percent of them are completing on a mobile device. Um, if you are talking about hourly roles and hourly hiring, we see that in 60s, 70s, uh, 70 percent. So you want to make sure it's a good mobile optimized experience. On our assessment experience, you can build a custom welcome page, you know, really thank the candidate. You want it to feel like your brand, so you might want um, a certain color accent choice or a welcome video. For example, if you apply to Outmatch as a candidate, you go through a video of our CEO welcoming you to the experience. So um, typically you want to build a custom experience for you. Um, and then our assessment specifically um, is built to engage the candidates more. So whatever assessment vendor you're looking at, make sure it's an engaging experience. Um, on our experience, for example, we have questions that prompt the candidate to think about a situation. Um, and to embed themselves into this assessment. So they can respond in a six point scale here on two socially desirable responses. So which one of these statements sounds like me uh, and the way I behave at work? And then I can respond on this scale here. Perhaps I'm not all extreme. Um, they can go through this experience. At the end of this experience, um, they uh, see a custom thank you page and are routed back into the Encompass uh, system and then information is made available on how they did to the hiring manager or the recruiter. So I wanted a little flavor there of what the assessment uh, experience looks like. And then I'll jump back to our PowerPoint um, and then show you a little bit about what the pre-recorded experience like, looks like. So in this scenario, we had a candidate complete an application, they took an assessment, and maybe they scored well enough and you want to take them to the next step, which might be your phone screen. Um, in this scenario, we've replaced your phone screen with a pre-recorded interview. Candidate's going to get invited to this pre-recorded interview and they're going to get on a welcome page for your organization. Maybe see some branding here about, uh, about what it's like to work at your organization. We see our clients embedding uh, like office tours. So like video office tours or a mark, uh, marketing YouTube video. Lots of creative things that you can do here to help engage the candidate when they're going through your hiring process. Um, and then typically our clients using this tool are recording themselves asking questions or they're uploading a video um, that's been professionally done. Um, so in our system, for example, you can ask as many questions as you want. We usually say about uh, five to seven max just because you don't want to make it too long because uh, we're thinking about candidate experience. And you want them to see a video of you asking a question, maybe it's a skills-based question, maybe it's just a general high-level question of why they're applying. You wanna give them some time to think about a response and then a time to answer. Um, so this is just an example of some of the things you can do with pre-recorded um, and what the candidate would see at the end of the day. Once you're ready for that live uh, that Logan laid out in the, in the framework, you can jump right into a live interview or you can schedule it prior. So we're doing this today. Some of you may be using video conferencing tools to do this. Um, and some of them uh, are going through some security issues right now. Um, so live interviewing is still not going away. We're still gonna wanna see that person face to face, but in a virtual environment. And we wanna make sure those tools that we're doing it are uh, protecting our data and are easily easy to manage. So we do have this solution as well uh, that our clients are leveraging. 
So that was just a really drink through the fire hose of some of what the candidate experience might look like. That the takeaway there is that we want to make sure the candidates have a good experience. So it shouldn't be, it, you know, in this war on talent, in the, in the next normal, you need to process these candidates and leave them with a good impression. And that's, the, that's what we're trying to do. Now, I think I have enough time to just show you the uh, end experience here of what it's like when you get the data back from these tools. So this is usually recruiting organization uh, and the hiring managers themselves. Um, and you can share what the hiring managers to see if you're not, if you want to share all the information with them. So I'm going to actually jump in to an assessment report up here. So this would be available through the Encompass system as well. Um, and it's in, oh, love technology, right? One second, I'm just going to sign back in. Automatic logouts. All right, I'm gonna pull up a candidate that would be available. Let's say they went through a restaurant front of house role. Um, this would be available, like I said, from the Encompass system. And they would basically see the end results of the candidate who completed the assessment. The overall score is gonna be the main factor here. So. Lots of candidates going through, lots of um, uh, different people that you could look at, and you wanna make sure your, your recruiters are focusing on the best fit. So that's one of the value propositions of an assessment. Um, we score half check to five checks, five being a great fit, um, and we provide a recommendation on whether you should move them through the process or not. Um, so you see an overall score, a relative score, so how does this candidate compare to other candidates who are completing this in the last 60 days? Um, so you can get a relative understanding. In this case, Jeffrey did well, but I might have a lot more candidates to look at. So I might wanna go focus it on another one. Um, and then top strengths and weaknesses. And I'm gonna go through this report pretty quickly. Uh, we can talk about it at the end if you're interested in seeing more. Um, on our assessment report, we make it easy for you to identify whether this person's a good fit or not. So our key insights page allows you to deep dive on everything we measured in the assessment and gives you simple visual cues to see if they scored within the range for this role. Um, so we call these blue areas the match area. This would change based on the role you're looking for. Um, and it shows you where the candidate scored, whether it was in that range for this job or outside. On the left here, you can see the different traits that we are important for this role and that we're measuring. And you can uh, see what they mean and what that score means for this candidate. So we want our assessments to do the interpretation for us um, as they're measuring the soft skills underneath this candidate. Um, and so for this, in this case, for Jeffrey, we're seeing a, a behavioral narrative that comes about based on his score on accommodation and what that might mean for the job. Um, we also turn this into an interview guide that can be used should you take this them further into that face-to-face -face interview. Um, so our interview guides are fully dynamic and created for every job um, and for every candidate. They are candidate specific and job specific. So you can create your own opening questions for how you want someone to interview this candidate um, and so we give you some sample competency questions. And then we also identify any follow-ups. So any weaknesses that the assessment detected are going to be uh, generated uh, and a follow-up for. So for example, we looked at accommodation earlier in the key insights. He scored outside of that match area. So we want you to ask this question and we want you to listen for this response from the candidate. So this tactical advice that uh, an assessment can provide is really important since your, inter your interviewers may be very busy interviewing lots of candidates. Um, I'll just touch on the, these last port, uh, portions here. So our assessment allows you to take uh, Jeffrey's score and compare him against other roles. Perhaps um, I'm hiring, I have a couple of requisitions open, I wanna see how he scores against other, other uh, jobs. So we can do that through this interface. And then you can also generate a development version of this assessment and then share it with Jeffrey directly should you hire him. Um, so it'll turn all this information into a guide for him to get. 
and then he can start his development journey with actual results from the assessment. Lastly, I'm just going to show you the back end of our interview. Um, so in this point, let's say that we had Adam got, take his assessment and he did well. We sent him the pre-recorded interview and now I have his results. So in this interface here, I can evaluate Adam's responses to each question that he recorded himself to. I can rate each of those questions and then I can share this out with other interviewers so they can uh, also provide input. And so we talk about this as collaborative interviewing. We might want to get multiple hiring stakeholders involved. Um, good way for the recruiter to work with the hiring manager early on in the candidate process. Um, so I can get the, the hiring manager's uh, ratings directly. I can get an overall thumbs up, thumbs down from a hiring stakeholder and leave comments as well as view other candidates' uh, responses. So that was a drink through the firehouse, and I know that, but this was just a little taste of some of the tools that you can use to help process all these candidates that we should be getting, uh, getting in place for. Yeah, AD, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. And that, that does give an overarching view of kind of what that could look like tangibly. Um, I think I want to point that over to Rob. I know that Rob has some specific examples with some of the clients that, that he has taken through the Encompass the Encompass Touch, I should say. And um, Rob, why don't you take it away on, on what you've been able to see through through true outmatch uh, data? Yeah, thanks guys. So I think, uh, first and foremost, I think the tool is fantastic. I've seen quite a few of these, but I haven't seen one that gets into this level of detail. Um, that being said, you know, the, the behavioral assessment will assign every candidate a number, you know, whether it's a 2.5 or a 3.5 or a 3.7. Um, it's not a magic bullet. Right, we've still got to do that kind of data interpretation ourselves. We've got to be sure that our organization is getting the value from Outmatch that we should be getting. So this is where we at um, Encompass can come in and help with that kind of data analyzation piece. So the Outmatch platform itself, it does have built-in analytics for administrators. So you can see you know, how many candidates have taken this exam, what the average score is, what the time to take, what the drop-off rate is, et cetera. Um, but, but where we can come in is to look at the people that you've actually brought on board into your organization. So these outmatch scores flow through our ATS and into our HRIS system, all digital, no paper, so we don't have to print anything out, we don't have to pass things out to review. Uh, but by pulling this data from our HRIS, we can uh, partner with outmatch administrators uh, in your organization to really get a robust understanding of what this is looking like kind of bigger picture. Um, so not only can we like monitor those manager utilizations, but we can help keep a pulse on the assessments. And if necessary, we can tweak and adjust the assessments if we're maybe not getting the candidates that we think we need. You know, maybe we've got it mapped to a role, but we consider, hey, you know, let, let's kind of talk through mapping it to a different role. We can help maybe getting all that stuff aligned for you. So um, on the screen, let's take a look at this example data set. This is from an impl uh, implementation with only three months of use time. So we call this kind of the early adoption and engagement phase. Um, first thing that stands out to me is we can obviously see these assessments are working, right? Our best um, it, people that we've hired in the best category, we've only had one out of 64 pe people turnover. So, you know, our, we're, we're Overall, best is kind of our best fit for our organization. But the thing that really stood out to me on this, uh, on the pie chart on the, on the right there, 25% of, uh, of employees hired into our organization did not have a score. So 25% of people that we hired did not take this assessment. So at Encompass, we say, okay, what does this mean? Do we need to readdress our change management strategy and our communications? Maybe we need to provide additional tools uh, to managers to feel comfortable interpreting the data themselves. These are the kinds of things that we can uh, we can help address here at Encompass. Uh, and AD, if you want to pop it over the next slide, there are a couple talking points there um, around digging deeper into this data. So uh, again, as I mentioned at the outset, this is more than just an overall score. We have an opportunity to benchmark our optimal hires um, and, and kind of what their actual profiles look like. So it, let's just say we're doing a case study on three perfect fits that we've got brought in in the last three months, right? Let's pull down their out match assessments and look at one of the some of the commonalities there are they all scoring in that blue bar kind of around the same spot on certain traits and that is you know someone who's a really key fit for this role 
what traits are they sharing and what traits are they not sharing? And the inverse is also true. So if we're having you know, high turnover, uh, but maybe these people scored a 3.2, 3.3, why, why are we having high turnover? Um, we can help in, in pulling these reports and looking through and saying, okay, you know, I've got the example on the screen, you know, maybe criticism, criti criticism tolerance is low and preference for structure is low uh, for, this, uh, for this particular role. They scored in the, uh, in, the, in the match areas for all of their other measurables, but these two seem to really stand out um, as commonalities for folks who are turning over. These are the kind of things that at Encompass, we, we will do some of the analytics for you and help you identify, hey, what you need to be looking for um, and, and what is an optimal hire uh, for your role. So the data is great. Uh, the tools that, that Outmatch provides are great, but there is that other level of, of really data analyzation that um, at Encompass we're, we're happy to partner with and, and, and help you find out so you can be sure that you're getting all the value out of Outmatch uh, that you possibly can be. That's great, Rob. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and I think to wrap it up, Andy, you know, you can talk about this type of, of scale, right? So, we, you know, we're, we're really thinking about this over, you know, we have these tools and we have these tangibles and now really how do we create the scale and framework for change? And I think it's a great way to kind of wrap up this, this thinking from our original macro thoughts and how we now take, you know, uh, true action against that. No, absolutely. Um, so this, as we've talked about, as we entered into our conversation today, and as Rob mentioned just now, um, you know, partnering, um, Outmatch has been a great partner for us. They have some great resources and tools. Um, but to the question that came in earlier, you know, it, it's, it's, it's more than that. You want to continue that experience, not just through the application process, but when they come on. And so, so what I've wrapped up today with is just kind of an overview of their experience. We've already touched on this earlier, but but what is it like as a candidate with the Encompass Group solution? And so starting with the applicant tracking system, everything what we've built is integrated for them, not only for the candidate experience, but also for your experience as a hiring manager or a recruiter. Um, going back, we've touched on this several times, just the influx of candidates that you might be experiencing. How do I get to those great candidates without having to sort through everything? And so at the point of application, they apply. It automatically can redirect them to the assessment, or you can invite them to take the assessment um, later on in the process, but all fully integrated that you can initiate that from the applicant tracking system itself. Um, it automatically takes them to that outmatch assessment that Andrew went through earlier today, um, showing them the candidate experience, um, custom assessments by job, additional cognitive assessments as necessary um, or applicable, and then automatically feeds those results right back into that applicant tracking system. And so again, depending on where it is in the process, at the point of application, when that individual comes through, you might see that score and you can see on the right what that looks like um, with a very quick link where you don't even have to leave the applicant tracking system. You just click on that link and it pulls up those assessment results that we also showed you earlier today. So at no point are you having to navigate to different systems. This can help you stack rank people based on their scores. But again, it's not the end. So of course, you, you take those scores and then you dig in deeper to the assessment. But helping you kind of put those top candidates at the top and helping you streamline your process. From there, everything's in your applicant tracking system. So then you move them through the process, of course. Um, we didn't touch on reference checks a lot today, but also an additional service offering that we partner with Outmatch on. Um, all, again, in a single location. So you can initiate those reference checks, get that going, have that automated, more information we can provide there. So um, this is really the Encompass solution, and then there's more to that. You know, you go from the applicant tracking, you've identified your hire, the reference check checks out, so now what? So now you feed them into your onboarding platform, all through Encompass, all online, um, all paperless that allows them to just be in this remote workforce environment and not have any delays um, in your hiring process. And that's the end goal. You want to get those right people in the seats at the right time. And so what is the right time? So let's go ahead and jump into what that means. The right time is now. When, when, is, when are we going back? When are we, you know, when are we opening offices? When are we going to be able to sit down at a restaurant? No one really knows. Um, but we have to be prepared for when that happens. And then also that new normal. What, what does that look like? Um, people, we might be waiting to bring people in person a little bit longer as we kind of slowly open our doors to in-person interviews. Um, so 
when do you start implementing this technology? And the question that came in earlier, how do we onboard them with a great experience, even when we're not hiring a lot? So, um, you know, and it takes some time to get to a good position and have those analytics that Rob showed earlier. Um, you know, the first three months or so, you're really focusing on implementation, early adoption, training those managers to make sure that you limit that 25% of candidates that aren't completing the assessment, um, making sure that you're fine tuning your process and, and making everything look good. Um, from there, you kind of go into this, uh, this growth phase, you know, actually looking at the assessment insights, um, comparing your hires versus the applicants, looking at trends that might have come out of it early on, again, making those adjustments as you go through, optimizing the candidate experience based on feedback that you receive from both hiring managers and candidates, um, and really doing some comparisons. And then once you kind of get that flow going and everything looks good, really from there, um, you really have these great metrics, um, engagement data, voluntary turnover or involuntary turnover, um, diversity and inclusion, which is, of course, a very hot topic and something that we should be focusing on, and performance insights. Also, a tool within the Encompass solution is performance management. So how are we tying these uh, great individuals and how are they really doing within our organization? Um, they may be sticking around, but are they doing good in their role? Um, and so that's, that's a lot of the insights that we're focused on. So again, the time is now. Um, if you're interested in something, it might be, you know, phase by phase. Um, but don't wait for that thousand applicants to come your way and be drowning <laughs> as a talent acquisition or, or hiring manager to start implementing. Um, you know, focus on that now. Take that piece. Take that step in that direction. So um, we are a little bit over our top of the hour. So I'll go ahead and um, we can pop to our last slide today. So, so what is next? What do we, what do, we do now? Um, I'm interested. I've, I've, I've drank the Kool-Aid a little bit. What do, we, what do we have next? Well, if you have questions, um, if you're an existing client, uh, Encompass client, um, feel free to reach out to your client experience manager um, or reach out to the, the email or call uh, listed below. If you are um, new and, and joining us today as a just learning more, um, this, these resources are also available for you um, to, to reach out and ask any questions and get further information. We can set up demonstrations, um, make sure that you can see the tool from end to end, uh, even develop a workflow similar to what you saw on the screen a minute, we can, a minute ago, we can actually develop a workflow for you specifically and what it would look like for your organization. Um, so, you know, let us know, reach out. We're happy to have conversations, uh, you know, no obligation type situation. Uh, just call us and let us know if you have any questions. And then again, existing clients, um, we're always here for you to support you in your uh, needs, especially in this environment. So, um, so I know we're a little bit over, but we can spare just a couple minutes for, for Q and A. There, there's been questions that have come through as we go through, have gone through the presentation. Um, but if there's any other questions, feel free to, to shoot them over now. Um, as a reminder, we will be sending this presentation and the recorded uh, version will be available for everyone um, at a, here in the next day or so. Um, and also in that wrap up email, that's where we'll be providing that, uh, that SHRM uh, key, the number for the for the credit. Um, that was a question that came through. So the, uh, the, the credit for your PDU will be sending that over in the email. Um, in addition to that, uh, we can be provide, we can also provide additional demonstrations. So um, I haven't seen a lot of questions come through. I, hopefully we were thorough. Uh, I guess any closing notes, Logan or Andrew or Rob before we? Well, you know, for, for getting this together with two different organizations, and we did start at, at, at 12.02 Central, you know, for being three minutes over, that's not terrible. And, you know, the world of, the world of virtual collaboration, right? So I'm, I'm really, I just want to, for the, on behalf of Outmatch, I just want to thank, thank the Encompass group for allowing us to, to join, join sessions here on this unique webinar. So thank you, Andy and Rob and, and, the, rest of the, and the rest of the group. Sam, Sam. I, yeah, uh, everyone. Thank you all so much. We appreciate your time today. Again, we'll be sending a, a follow-up email um, here shortly. Be on the lookout for that. And again, make sure to jot down the, the contact information if you have any questions. Um, and we, we appreciate your, your time today. Yeah, stay safe, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks.